Let me read to you a passage from the 16th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 9 to 15. It's the Gospel for Easter Saturday. St. Mark writes, When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterwards, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. That's from Mark chapter 16 verses 9 to 15 for Easter Saturday. What does it tell us of? Well, it tells us of the heart of man. What do I mean? Well, at the time of my speaking here, there had recently been an interview with Richard Dawkins, the self-professed atheist from Oxford, conducted by a journalist of the Australian Dateline television program. The journalist repeatedly told Dawkins that he was entirely unusual in his positive atheism, which was correct. But it soon became evident that the journalist himself agreed with much of what Dawkins stood for. They were agreed that religion is the source of great harm and violence in the world, and that this is how it has always been. Now, any sensible religious person would agree that great numbers of religious people have been the source of violence and harm. But this is not to say that religion has necessarily been the source of their violence. A person who is an adherent of a religion that inculcates love and justice will, for other reasons, be violent and unjust. He may spectacularly sin against the tenets of his religion. Of course, there may be religions that do indeed incline their adherence to violence. On the other hand, Many who profess not to be religious have also been violent and harmful. Did Hitler profess or have any religion? Or did Lenin and Stalin? Were the leaders of the French Revolution, and in particular its terror, religious? The idea is absurd. Napoleon Bonaparte, at best, was a deist, but he was scarcely religious in an active sense. He became a little more so, as his days drew to their close on the far-flung island of St. Helena. There is no doubt, though, that for modern secular man, the profession of religion has been discredited by the crimes of many of its professors. However, all ought to understand, including the atheist typified by Richard Dawkins, that the mere fact that a person professes religion and engages in religious practices does not mean that his heart is properly moral and religious. His bad actions exclude him as a representative of true religion, which is religion of the heart. As our Lord said, by their fruits you will know them. Religion is a matter of the heart. That said, the question arises, what are some of the features of the heart that are necessary for true religion. Well, in our Gospel today that I read earlier, our Lord's disciples failed in a fundamental re requisite for revealed religion. When I speak of his disciples, I mean his apostles. They failed in faith. Specifically, they did not believe the reports by direct eyewitnesses among our Lord's disciples that he had risen from the dead. Inasmuch as the Christian religion depends on the acceptance of certain propositions as being historical facts, 
this failure in belief was a fundamental failure. For instance, if a person does not believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and on the third day rose from the dead, and Islam does not accept either of those two propositions, then it is impossible for him to be counted as a Christian. We read that Mary Magdalene, and I quote, went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterwards, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. A dispassionate observer might claim that there was nothing wrong with the state of the heart of Christ's apostles in their unbelief. It was just that they lacked, in their view, sufficient evidence. They were not intellectually satisfied by the claims that he had been seen in the flesh. But as a matter of fact, we have it on the word of Christ himself that what was wrong and what accounted for their lack of belief was the state of their hearts. We read that later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. This alone shows how religion is very much a matter of the heart. This applies most especially to revealed religion which involves a revelation that is beyond beyond the mere natural. In the nature of the case, the heart of man must be properly disposed. If the heart of man is not right, not properly disposed, not only will he not practice his religion as he should, and perhaps bring disgrace on revealed religion as a result, but his heart will not even be able to believe. His heart will be too hard. As it turns out, we need the grace of God to properly dispose our hearts to accept the religion he has revealed in his Son Jesus Christ. We need a heart that is not hard, a heart that is inclined to believe the testimony of the Gospel. Our Lord said to his Apostles that on his rising from the dead, while they loved him, their hearts were too hard. They failed to believe not because of lack of evidence, but because of a deeper failure. His risen presence before them changed that, and with that they received the mission to make disciples of all the nations. Well, let us pray that the grace of God will create in us, in us all, a new heart, a heart disposed to accept wholeheartedly the gospel, and then to live it generously.